Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I be the Angie doing political commentary for the media speaks, welcoming you to the show. Hey guys, how many of you know I'm giving away free silver? It's true. Uh, the show is sitting at over 100,000 hits. The show is pro-Trump. The show has covered past conventions. We were, uh, we've were we interviewed vice presidential candidates. Jim Gray has been on the show. We've interviewed celebrities with the media speaks, uh, Tyrone Ventura, Steve Grant. Guess what? The GOP didn't bother to, uh, to give me a media pass. Kind of odd, ain't it? So uh, tweet the last video. Uh, Look up uh, uh, Correct Views giving away a free ounce of silver. It's on my site. You go there and you leave a message asking the GOP chairman on a tweet why he denied uh, the Correct Views immediate past. Send me a screenshot of that. You're going to be in the running. I'm giving away silver. I'm going to be giving away uh, the band's autograph. I'm going to autograph it. They're going to get a copy of the CD before uh, uh, the single before anybody else does in the entire world. We're going to number it. We're going to write a certificate out saying that you want it. It's going to be a big deal. All you got to do, tweet Mr. Priebus, uh like I did. Tweet him. Say, hey, why have you denied the correct views? All right, guys. I'm going to jump into the uh, news here. Went to screen share. Federal Reserve friendly Clinton attacks Trump on the economy. This it should have gotten dumb the other day. Hillary Clinton's plan. Ooh, uh, while maybe not as bad as Bernie Sanders, it, Hillary Clinton's plan will bankrupt the nation. She has been in favor of bank bailouts. She's been in favor of spending your tax money on the most insane things. And yet she's going to question Trump on the economy. This is from Kurt Nemo, prison planning. Hillary Clinton is scheduled to deliver a speech in Ohio. Of course she did. And it will attack Donald Trump. The core proposition of her speech in Ohio is that if you put Donald Trump behind the steering wheel of the American economy, he would very likely drive us off a cliff and working families would bear the brunt, Clinton's senior policy advisor, the idiot Jake Sullivan, told Politico. Uh, this is not just a supposition or an assertion. This is a natural conclusion we reach when you look at the combination of his policy proposals. Unlike Clinton, his policy proposals make great sense. His reckless and erratic temperament, neither of that is true. He just isn't a PC whiner like you. And his record in the private sector, his record in the private sector is stunning. Mrs. Clinton has done nothing in the private sector. She's been sucking up the government teat her whole life. Uh, the Trump campaign might respond by stating the obvious, it says, that the Democrats have already driven the economy over the cliff and we are rapidly approaching the rocks below. And if, if ever a true statement was said on the correct views, that right there is it, friends. The Trump campaign might respond that way. It says the, the Republican co-conspirators have done an excellent job in destroying the economy along with the Democrats. Since Hillary's husband signed NAFTA, around 5 million jobs have been transferred. That is, they have moved the jobs away out of the country so that they can uh, take it to a nation that pays, you know, a dollar twenty minimum wage. What's replaced it? Low-wage authoritarian hellholes uh, jobs. Uh, China and Asia is getting our jobs. We get uh, secondhand uh, work cash register jobs. Democrats, it says, have pushed hard for the son of NAFTA. Of course, that's TPP. We've covered repeatedly on here why that's a bad idea. It's the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Partnership. A central player in the TPP is Vietnam. All right, guys, let's send our jobs to Vietnam because, you know, that's we were able to compete with that. Well, why don't you take a look here at what I'm sharing with you on the screen? The average hourly wage right here, look at it, in Vietnam is a dollar five per hour. Do you understand that? Transnational corporations are lining up to offshore jobs there. Vietnam is so important to the neoliberal globalist free trade treaty, that's the TPP, that Obama actually went to Ho Chi Minh just last month. 
40 million. We've already lost 5 million. 40 million more jobs could be sent offshore over the next two decades if the current trend of deindustrializing America continues under the TPP. Listen to this. Jobs offshoring benefited Wall Street corporate executives and shareholders because lower labor and complacent cost resulted in higher profits, writes Paul Craig Roberts. He worked as the uh, assistant secretary of treasury under Ronald Reagan. Um, despite promises of a new economy and better jobs, the replacement jobs that we're seeing have been increasingly part-time in America, lowly paid jobs in America, things like domestic services, retail clerks, waitresses, and bartenders. That's what we have given away our manufacturing and our $18, $19 an hour jobs for. And this is why this cycle, I'm leaving the Libertarian Party. Because Gary Johnson has it in his head that outsourcing is somehow a libertarian ideal. Libertarian ideals tend to work if uh, you're on an even playing field. If you're going to send jobs to a nation that is cheating by paying its employees $1.15 an hour, then that's not libertarianism, that's suicide. Okay, It's not just a flesh wound, hence the reason I'm wearing the shirt. It's the Gary Johnson shirt. As previously noted, it was Bill Clinton who set the stage for the subprime fiasco and the crash that happened in 08. By the time Clinton left office in 2000, the so-called dot-com bubble was beginning to burst and stocks fell to around a half their peak value. That destroyed friends $10 trillion in wealth. And yet the Clintons want to question Donald Trump. This produced a brief recession at the start of the Bush administration, which set the stage for the current Great Recession. Of course, that's what we're living in now. It's known as the Depression. And it says it doesn't really matter who sits in the Oval Office if the Federal Reserve and the central bankers continue their massive asset purchases. Well, guess what? Clinton wants more of the same with a little bit of a lipstick on a pig, they called it while Trump wants to audit the Fed. What does Hillary want? The Federal Reserve, she says, is a vital institution to our economy. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case with the data that I just gave you, so maybe you shouldn't be attacking Donald Trump, who's right here, while you're wrong. That's why Secretary Clinton believes that the Fed needs to be more representative of American as a whole. Uh, what, what do they want? To make it more PC. The Federal Reserve solution offered by Clinton, more voices of women, African Americans, Latinos, and uh, minorities. Let me ask you something. As long as the Federal Reserve exists, it is going to destroy middle-aged white men just as quickly as it's going to destroy Latinos, women, African Americans, because it is a disaster. That is why Trump is right on the economy. And she, friends, is painfully incorrect. Guys, right there, you're looking at my Patreon site. So, patron site. So far, nobody has donated anything. And uh, I would appreciate it if you did. Helps me keep the show going. Moving on, we've got um, Tax Foundation. It takes America 8.9 billion hours to comply with IRS paperwork. And uh, that is precisely why I, for the most part, am libertarian, is because the libertarians, and to his credit, Gary Johnson wants to do this, want to abolish the IRS. Uh, that was Rand Paul's, uh, that should have been what Rand Paul ran on instead of whining about Planned Parenthood. He was perfectly right there. Abolishing the IRS prior to the, the IRS, the average American had the best life quality, if you will, of any citizen anywhere in the entire world. And among other things, like the gold standard, the IRS is one of the things that has ruined life for so many of us here. I mean, the IRS did to our living standards what Drake has done to music. Okay, utterly destroyed it. Yes, I said it. Uh, CNS News, according to the Tax Foundation, it will take Americans 8.9 billion hours to comply with the IRS tax filing rules of 2016. 
that equals a compliance cost of $409 billion. In other words, it's costing way more than it's worth. In addition, the Tax Foundation reported that the U.S. tax code has grown from 409,000 words in 1955 to 2.4 million in 2015. That's an increase of 486%. Um, that 8.9 billion hours is equal to nearly 4.3 million full-time workers doing nothing but tax return paperwork. Also, the $409 billion loss to the U.S. economy in IRS compliance is greater than the gross product of 36 states. Providing examples of how costly it is to complete IRS tax filings, the Tax Foundation reported that it costs $2.8 billion hours or $147 billion. That's what it costs, not what it makes. What it costs. to the U.S. business income tax returns. It's the second most costly for the U.S. individual income tax returns, weighing in at 2.6 billion hours at $98 billion. Uh, and it talks about how many corporations file in different ways to try and less than that. It doesn't really do any good. I want to give a shout out to whoever Nathan Hale is here at uh, Prison Planet. Look at this comment that he left. I'm going to highlight it here on screen share. I love what this man wrote. Shout out to Nathan Hale. 8.9 billion hours, he writes, is equivalent to over 21,000 lives wasted every year. Assuming that a 70-year lifespan and 16 hours per day per life, people get uptight about 50 people getting killed in Orlando. Orlando. What about this armed bureaucracy that since 1913 has deprived us of over a million American lives? It's called a tax holocaust. Where's a boxman when you need him? Friends, look at the math. He is absolutely correct. You can't argue with math. Uh, Christelle's always wanting to... Uh, no matter what I say, Christelle picks the polar opposite. When it's math, when the numbers are right in front of you, okay, really, math. Uh, Nathan Hale here has nailed it, and uh, best comment I've seen at Prison Planet all week. Uh, Daily Caller News Foundation, a progressive outlet accidentally proves that blue states, that is Democrat states, have 42% more mass shootings. Now, my dear friend Giselle, God bless her, is convinced that if you take and bring in these insane gun restrictions. Now, she's not like a far lefty on this one. She's a little more uh, center than you would imagine. But as a lefty at heart, she believes in a pantheon of uh, gun restrictions. For instance, if you're on the no-fly list, she doesn't think you should have a gun. Well, that's fine. Because what comes to mind is terrorists and people that want to, you know, hurt other people and people that are mentally disturbed. The trouble with that is the Bush administration was caught putting people on no-fly lists simply because they disagreed with them politically and they were in no way, shape, matter, or form a threat to anyone. That's why that kind of thing doesn't work. It's usually the Democrats that want to bring in these insane gun control ideas. I love KMFDM, but you know what? they can go to hell with this new idea that they have where they are wanting gun restrictions and they're pushing it on their site. That's a ridiculous idea. I've loved KMFDM my whole life, but let me tell you something. There was gun restrictions in Paris, and when the terrorists came in, I call them Parists, when the Parists came in, the fact that nobody was armed led to more death. Okay, this is a terrible idea. Well, it's now proven that blue states, Democrat states, that have all these gun laws, have 42% more mass shootings than red states after adjusting for population, according to data published by Vox. And what's funny about that is Vox is a progressive media outlet. In other words, they are a lefty rag. Their screed normally leans left. They just proved that Republicans and uh, conservatives and libertarians are actually correct here. Vox published its data after the Orlando terror attack last Sunday, as you can see here, 
and it suggests that blue states, which tend to have extremely strict gun laws, are ironically much more likely to have mass shootings than red states, which have less strict gun laws. Guys, I live in Ohio. Guess what? Most of the gun, he, gun violence here now is either gang thug related or unfortunately domestic. You don't see other gun violence happening here very often because we have a right to conceal carry. You're not going to attack my wife, uh, little tiny Christelle, because you know there's a real good chance she's going to shoot your head off if you do. You know what? That's good. And it, it proves out in the numbers here. The, DN, the DCNF's anal analysis found that 543 of the mass shootings listed by Vox occurred in blue states, Democrat states, while only 330 occurred in red states, Republican states. If adjusted to account for differences in the size of population, blue states have 3, 0.381 mass shootings per 1,000 people, while red states have a mere 267. In other words, places where Democrats controlled the state legislature were more likely to have mass shootings than the crazy, out-of-control conservatives who are, guess what, right. Friends, you're looking right there. That's the Seacrest Motel. And behind it, you're seeing Cedar Point. You're seeing Sandusky. Any race fans out there, they are so close to the racetrack, you won't believe it. Go, go here. And tell them when you get there that you heard about it at the correct views. You're going to get a savings above and beyond the savings. It's already there when you go to Cedar Point, when you go to Sandusky, Ohio. They're only open until the end of Hollow Weekend. So make sure you go. You can't stay there in December. They're not open. Go there. Tell them you heard about it from the correct views. And you're going to get a discount on top of what is already there. And I'll tell you what, they save you a fortune. Why are you going to spend hundreds of dollars? Yes, it's hundreds of dollars to stay at the breakers when you can get just as nice of a bed, just as nice of a room for a fraction of the cost. And you can save even more by saying you heard about the correct views. Friends, that brings us to the dumbdy of the day. That's right, the dumbdy of the day is the stupidest person of the day. It's brought to you with much love from Sticker Junkie which is another place that you can go and when you get your stickers made on checkout, type in the correct views or correct views and you're going to get a discount. Here's the dumb of the day, friends. It's from Daily Caller. Muslim, what a good day for Daily Caller on this show. Muslim DHS advisor called Israel a suspect in the September 11th. Now, I'm not about to go on here praising Zionism because while I think the Jews get blamed for everything, come on, quit blaming the Jews for everything, I do know that Zionist Jews who are in control create a lot of the problem that we see in the world. No, I'm not a Hitler. One particular kind of Judaism tends to be a problem in the world. Just like one particular kind of Islamism tends to be a problem in the world. Just like the Westboro Baptist Church tends to be a problem in the world. It is not indicative of who most Christians are. I get it. But to say that, and I, I do believe that the, the, the government could have prevented 9-11. I'm not saying that either. But to imply that anybody other than Islamists ultimately did the destruction, perhaps hand in hand with other people, is simply to go into this with other stupidity, which is why it gets the dummy of the day. A current advisor for the Department of Homeland Security is a Muslim leader who has accused America of doing Israel's dirty work, while well, sometimes we actually do. And he named Israel as a suspect in the September 11th terrorist attacks. And he is a, an apologist for terrorists. Um, again, regardless of what you think about Zionism, it's a rather big brush here to try to say that Israel caused 9-11. Salam al Mariani, who gets the dumbdy of the day, is president of the Muslim Public Affairs Council. He currently serves as the Homeland Security Advisory Committee for Foreign Fighter Task Force. Believe it or not, he's also on the HSAC Subcommittee on Faith-Based Security Communications. 
In 2001, Al Mariachi suggested that Israel, not Islamist extremists, was ultimately behind the September 11th attacks. At the very least, they both were tied to it. To imply that there were no Muslims involved is absolute stupidity, even if you do want to blame Israel. You cannot possibly say that Islam had its hands clean here. If we're going to look at suspects, we should look at the groups that benefit the most from these kinds of incidents. And I think we should put the state of Israel on the suspect list because I think this diverts attention from what's happening in the Palestinian territories so that they can go on with their aggression and occupation and apartheid policy. But let me tell you what, genius. Israel capitulated and gave you Gaza. And what have they gotten from Gaza? They've gotten bombed from Gaza. The Palestinians did not move into Gaza and offer the olive branch of peace and love. So, obviously, capitulation is not something that is going to help the Israelis because the last time they did it, they got bombed. And now they've got this bonehead blaming them for 9-11. According to the White House, visitor records, this genius, Al Mariotti, has visited the White House 11 times since 09. So, I mean, maybe you're getting some insight here as to why so few Christians and Yazidis have been brought into the U.S. as refugees. And such a high number of Muslims have. Don't you think? If nothing else, that's the dumb D of the day. And you can support the show by going to the correct views of hotmail.com. And all money you tell me you're going to, all money you send to me, I'll tell you where to send it from there. Goes towards a better show, goes towards these lights, goes towards the computer that you're seeing. You can also help me on Patreon. You can also help me by supporting sponsors like uh, Change Transportation. Don't call Uber, call Change and say, hey, I don't want to pay Uber's prices. I'm going to pay yours. I found you on Facebook. Yeah, that's right. Facebook, change transportation. Again, let them know you heard about it from Sam with the correct views, and you're going to get a discount because you're a listener. Good night, friends. God bless. Hit share on this, and make sure you tweet Mr. Priebus, the chairman of the GOP. You can find him on Twitter. Just type in GOP chairman, P-R-I-E-B-U-S is his last name. Do that, please. Say, why didn't you give the correct views in media pass? Send me a screenshot of what you did, and I'm going to enter you in a, comp in a contest to get some silver and some autographs and some music and some cool stuff. Thanks, friends. Good night. God bless.